will actually go on the outside of Hubble. So we're changing the way Hubble looks and that we're hanging this huge radiator on the back. And you'll see in a second, we've got a large conduit full of uh, plumbing and uh, electrical cables that will actually route under Hubble and bring it back up inside through the bottom. And uh, that large sock there is what's being pushed up by me. You can see me down there on the bottom. We had just installed the conduit. John's pulling it through. And eventually, we'll hook that up up top, peel it open, and take these cables and evaporator lines out and hook them up to that black box you just saw us take out a while ago called the NCC. And uh, right now, we're getting, uh, actually, the NCC seems to be running well, and we're getting it to cool down. It's going to take weeks. You can see us uh, as we uh, finish up, and we're closing the doors. And a picture of us uh, with the uh, tool handles uh, ready to go back into the airlock. And a really nice picture saying goodbye, uh, end of the day, and beautiful shot of the earth in the background. After the uh, EVAs were complete, it was time to uh, say goodbye to the telescope. It's Nancy and I at the robotics uh, workstation going in for the uh, grapple of the HST while it was still on the uh, support structure. That's a picture of the end effector on top of the grapple fixture. After we uh, latched onto the Hubble, we uh, lifted it up off of the, uh, the, the uh, support structure and got it ready to uh, be deployed. This next scene, you'll see the arm actually coming off of the telescope, followed by Scooter flying us away. You know, it's amazing to look out and see this massive object in the payload bay as it floats right across our window. I think everyone on the flight deck ducked as it went by. <laughs> Because then we had the uh, photo frenzy as everybody got up there to take photos of this amazing event as we just watched it uh, pirouette in space out in front of us as we uh, said goodbye. Just, uh, w I think uh, the telescope looked like it was in great shape there. Rick is using the handheld laser again to take a mark as we drift away. You can see he got 435 feet uh, out. And we had our final uh, goodbye looks as we uh, sped away from the Hubble and, and left it behind. It's just a tremendous jewel uh, for NASA and the world. Let me tell you, after nine hard days, we were looking forward to a day off like you look forward to a two-week vacation. And uh, we're getting things, uh, we're getting ready for the morning there. There's our personal kit. If it's not tied down or Velcroed, you're probably going to lose it on orbit. Here's a, a cycle ergometer machine that uh, we traded out twice a day to uh, allow folks enough room to work out. Uh, there's Mike getting his workout. Let me tell you, exercise felt great up there. It, uh, was, it was a real necessity. Lunchtime on the mid-deck. Not much extra space, but uh, it's a good thing we all got along with each other. Mike did a good job that day, so here's his reward. <laughs> uh, the Earth really zings by. Uh, here's a look straight down at the coast of South America going into the Andes. Uh, you can see how fast we're moving, even though we're 350 miles up. Uh, Scooter's taken some uh, Earth observation shots with a little bit of spare time on that day off. We got some wonderful views. You can see, you can really see the curvature of the Earth up there, uh, up from 350 miles. And we also got some nice uh, sunrises up there. It happens every hour and a half. We did a burn the next day to get ready for entry. You can see Nancy didn't have her seat belts on. Uh, she's hanging on for dear life. And then uh, the day after that, it was time to come home. We put on our suits and uh, did our deorbit burn and began to fall back into Earth's atmosphere. Things really started to heat up and uh, started flashing outside. Uh, you're going to see in this next shot that Rick is looking at the vertical tail in his mirror. He asked me to look back there and see how it was glowing white hot, and I said, uh, no thanks, buddy. <laughs> Some things you just don't want to see. Finally, as we're uh, coming into the Cape, we got our first good look uh, at the ground. It was just a beautiful night uh, as we're falling. This is an infrared shot. You can see uh, the shuttle, the belly of the shuttle heated up from the entry. It's glowing white hot. As we rolled around uh, and lined up with the runway, called down to the ground, field inside on a beautiful night. 300 feet, uh, Digger puts down the landing gear. You can see that they appear dark and cold from being stowed up in the belly. And then this is the shot we had as we came in for landing that night uh, as the runway pulls up in front of us. Just pull the nose up, try and uh, touch down as gracefully as you can with a 225,000 uh, glider brick. <laughs> you can see uh, the landing gear as we touch down here are going to spin up and heat up, become uh, sort of white hot right after touchdown. Drag chute comes out. 
The landing was so much fun, we wanted to do it again. So. <laughs> it's really amazing to me to think that, uh, you know, an hour earlier, we were going five miles every second. Now, uh, here we are back at our home uh, at Kennedy where we started, uh, stopped at the end of the runway where the convoy comes out to greet us. Everybody, uh, we stop on centerline there. Uh, we all jump out and have a chance to shake hands and say hello. Administrator came to greet us, and we uh, really enjoyed that. Just uh, super to get a chance to look out at the vehicle that took you to space and brought you back. Everybody was uh, really pumped up to be home. And just uh, one chance to say hello and salute all the folks uh, that worked so hard to make this mission a success. When most people think of the ships in NASA's fleet, they think of the space shuttles that pierce the sky as they carry astronauts toward space. 